the way that you play checkpoints, like there's a lot of very obvious defensive positions that you have to like kind of worry about and break through. So when you're fighting for this first checkpoint, they're going to have people on the snipe. They may have people on this ramp and not as common, but you may have someone potentially flank. But these two areas are the main thing that you need to focus on. Um, as a blaster in this game, both your torpedoes and your rapid blaster shots do a very good job of dealing with these people. And especially since there's like a little bit of a grate right here, you can shoot through the grate and get some extra angles. And as the rapid blaster, like the, oh, oops, the rapid blaster can actually get an angle here and do chip from behind. So there's a lot of really interesting positions that um, blasters can take on this map. And it's the same thing for the next two checkpoints. Where you're just camping this type of ledge. Again, there might be people at the top of this ramp. Might be someone all the way up here. A lot of the short range stuff is going to drop down here. So, you know, being able to anticipate and hold these positions before the enemy can get into there is kind of the name of the game. That's how TC is in general, is that it's a it's a game of timing windows. It's a game of getting into a spot and controlling that space before the enemy is allowed to do so. This is an open match around S rank. Yeah, I feel like we might see more Rapid Blaster over time. So Charger versus Hydra, both of these are pretty interesting. I think both are pretty reasonable and pretty strong. Um, because this is such an open map, I think Hydra gets a little bit more value than it would normally. But when it comes to actually taking fights, I kind of like Yellow's team. They're a little bit faster and have a little bit more of a um, scariness to them. We can combo Tri-Strike and Inkjet with these people moving in. Or we can combo Kraken with these two moving in. Like there's a lot of redundancy that we can take a lot of value on. And they have like two mid-range weapons that are very susceptible to getting ran up on. So um, unironically, the point sensor from this um, Nova actually can be pretty useful. And it, again, when we talk about hitting, like, you know, like wanting to defend in these certain spots, Playing against like a tri slosh for an example, they guard these ledges really, really well. And especially up here, they guard these ledges really, really well. So if we're on defense, we have to be very careful about the the snowball effect of the tri slosh. But if we can take care of the tri slosh, I think for the most part we're okay. The only other specific thing that I'm kind of concerned with about this game is if if we fall behind early. Because they have double Booyah Bomb and also tri Slash is just very annoying. Um, they have a lot of ways to kind of shut us out of the tower by the end of the game. So that's what I'm kind of looking at in, in this set. But I'm hoping for the Rapid Blaster specifically that they're able to take um, some, some creative angles. And I think they actually specifically mentioned um, wanting some tips and assistance when it comes to positioning. We'll keep a close eye on the way that we position. Because outside of the Hydra, like if we can avoid the Hydra, we can actually be pretty proactive with taking space. As long as we don't get cut off guard, like as long as we know where the tri slosh is, we can be pretty aggressive with how we want to take space. Shots on tower is okay. But as the blaster, we're not really focused on the objective itself right now. We're going for like overall control. And when it comes to taking space, I would like to see us like hold these areas. And if we sit specifically like behind these types of spots and we're just moving around in these areas, we can keep out of the tri slosh range while still poking at them pretty safely. Because again, the tri slosh is a pain if we get too close under a ledge. But we can also control a lot of space. 
So I would like us to to drop either left or drop right. Um, left's probably a little bit safer, but right gives us some interesting angles because we can specifically defend against this, which this is a common area that people like to take. Obviously, they didn't take it in this game, but um, I, I would like to see more aggressive positioning than just shooting at the tower because in a lot of scenarios, most people aren't going to initially run to the tower, especially on a map this big. Most people are able to get their specials pretty fast just because there's like so much area to paint. Yeah, now we're getting into the spot. It would be nice if we got here a little bit faster, but let's let's see how we can do. Oh, okay. Unfortunate with the the ledge there. But this is good. Like having this off angle and going wider is really. Um, this is what we want to be doing with the blaster. If we want to continue shots on this person under here, we probably should drop left or if you want to be more aggressive we can drop right but i'm scared about tri-slosh if we drop right but if we move faster we can potentially play around this ledge get shots where they were before they move forward and then if they start you know throwing a bunch of stuff our way we can start retreating or we can jump out if we have to but i'd rather us take the aggressive space faster and the few shots that we took here onto the tower made it so that our timing wasn't as clean as it could have been I do like these these wider aggressive angles with the um, with the buster. After we like this pick on the tower is good. After this pick, it's not our goal shouldn't be to start scoring points. We don't need to get on the tower. We have a player advantage and we want to be able to push that. And how do we push when we have an advantage? Or how do we push our advantage when we do have one? Take space. So instead of immediately positioning positioning ourselves in an obvious spot and in a spot where we can potentially get beamed by a lot of their uh, weapons, I'm fine sitting here and st like starting to get shots behind this little pillow. And if you know, if we poke them and they move back, then we continue to take like continue to move forward and take space in order to like win this game. There's two things you do. You position yourself aggressively, so you you poke them out and you make them retreat. That's step one. Once they retreat, that's when Hydra sits in this spot. That's when, you know, a mid-range weapon's probably gonna sit here. You might even have two mid-range here. One of them might look left side. It just kind of depends, and you have to be ready to adapt. But once they're in, you know, once you've pushed them back and they're sitting in these defensive positions that's where, as I was talking about at the beginning, that's where we can start taking our aggressive spots as a um, blaster. We can look to, you know, get under this ledge. It's a little bit thick for that type of nuance. I guess maybe we should make it a little bit thinner. Um, but we can take this type of position and shoot under this ledge or shoot around the ledge and hit the Hydra. We can also use this block as cover and get chip over these ledges which is really good. And again, you have the ability to potentially go all the way right. And you can still chip the Hydra from like this angle and hit them this way. And it's a little bit more uh, deceptive. And people aren't as, they're not as ready for it. Um, because if you're sitting like here, or, or even just like playing around this pillow and doing chip, um, the Hydra is gonna have an easier time retreating and they have a better chance at actually hitting you. This right flank is a little bit out of the way, but a lot of times you can catch people off guard because, you know, this Hydra wants to focus on the tower. That's their, their main goal. So taking an angle like this off angle away from them on this right side gives you a good opportunity to potentially get a pick. And if you get a pick on the Hydra, then you can start looking to be a little bit more aggressive and start pushing these people back more. And that's how you start, you know snowballing this game. You know, you're getting pushed off the tower and this is prime opportunity for you to take one of these side angles and start doing damage. That's one of the, the values of a blaster is being able to get underneath ledges and force people off of the ledges. And we want to be doing that more consistently. But we should be able to get checked almost. Yeah, like what we're doing now is good. We should have just done this immediately. And again, I think we're just too focused on, um, they were too focused on touching the objective constantly, which for our comp, like we're more than happy for our charger to be the one that's holding these positions. 
I'd much rather us take these aggressive angles as fast as absolute possible. I like the patience there. But again, we're, we're too focused on tower. The other thing is that we could also look for, um, you know, while people want to stop this checkpoint and stop this tower, the other nice part about this kit is the inkjet. And we can totally inkjet from this kind of angle and up this ledge, or we can inkjet in this corner and go, you know, really far if we need to. But there's a lot of ways. I actually probably like this far right inkjet better, but both of them are totally fine. And again, just coming at a different angle and getting damage so that the rest of our team's able to push up. Instead of taking those shots there, move up to this place. Uh, with this dropping specifically, we'd probably be sitting around, um, you know, we, we'd have to position accordingly, but feel free to get off the tower. Yeah, we're just unable to to threaten ledges if we're not getting up close to the ledges. That's the biggest thing, playing the... Oof. Unfortunate, but nice direct. That's just kind of the, the major theme that I'm seeing with how we're, we're playing. Yeesh, these mechanics are going, going hard with these shots. Uh, what do you do when you're locked out? Uh, it's a lot of it depends, but you have to just be careful. As a splash, I'm building specials and just trying to bomb ledges. The biggest thing is not having, like, making sure that there aren't people sharking ledges that you're trying to drop from. But sometimes you just need to slow down is, like, the ultimate thing. Just take it slow and make sure as a team you're collapsing on whatever, you know. You have to find an opening and a hole in the enemy defense. And as a team, you just work to to get, you know confirm the pick as cleanly as possible, and then from there it's easy. But getting that first pick is t hard. And if the enemy team's playing super disciplined, sometimes you have to slow down like extra to where it's really frustrating. And that's their goal is to like bait you into making a bad play. Yeah. Continuing to shoot uh, is an indication to me that you're you're too focused on tower, both on offense and defense, like too much. Ideally, with tower control, you, everyone that's not sitting on the tower is way past the, like, not way in front, but in front enough of the tower to where they can just ride it for free. And if you're not in that type of position, you probably don't need to get on tower yet. And you need to look to play for a, an advantage. Because it's hard to get consistent, solid pushes during this time. And the other problem with constantly sitting on tower is that you're becoming predictable for the enemy team so all of these ledges that we talked about that you may potentially threaten you know like when if you're fighting for mid for example and you're taking one of these types of spots so that you can you know punish people that are sitting on these types of areas or if your team has an advantage and you're pushing past mid Holding this this kind of spot to hit here or here or sitting back here and hitting this or you know going over here. I guess technically you'd be a little bit deeper, like going here and hitting this or hitting this. Like all of these angles, if they know that you're consistently just sitting on tower as the blaster, they don't have to worry about this as much and they can just focus their attention forward. So part of Part of taking those wide angles is to like keep the enemy honest. And if you do it well, it keeps them kind of paranoid. And then they slow down and then they, they don't feel confident being able to move forward. But if they know that you're there, you're always sitting on tower, the enemy team can start taking advantage of that. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we know what's uh I think we know how we how we look to improve after this one. I do like you jump in the beacons though. Your jumpins have been pretty smart. One of them was a little bit questionable, but for the most part they're pretty good. Yeah. So overall, like blaster play really good. 
But some of the decision making was uh, kind of scuffed. So we'll go through it. I guess the first thing is just like tower or any objective. So this goes for all the modes. Is an afterthought. Afterthought. And what I mean by this is that you don't want to prioritize moving the tower before you have control. Focus. So I guess just like focus. Control. Which that can be paint and focus on out painting the enemy. That can be, you know, focus on getting picks, start getting a number advantage. But this is the final step of the equation. Finally, doing the objective is always going to be the final step of the equation. You don't push Rainmaker until you have a path forward. You don't move tower until there's space forward for it to, to start moving. All of these are nuance, like everything. Splatoon is not like a flowchart game, though competi most competitive games are not. Um, so everything, not everything is absolute, but you know there'll be certain times where you do have to focus, especially zones, depending on penalties. You may have to like focus on that first, but don't worry about tower or whatever the objective is until you already are in a strong position. You don't want to push tower until you have an advantage and you don't want to focus on getting the person off the tower until you have some sort of advantageous scenario. Um, but yeah, another thing here is specials, getting your specials to help you with, uh, with getting that control, getting that space. That's another good one. Yeah, move forward. Uh, take space. These are all the same things. So I guess it goes both ways. Move forward when you have an advantage. Start moving back when your team is at a disadvantage. Because sometimes you overstayed your welcome. Play under ledges. to kind of help you get past sitting on tower. Like playing on their ledges allows you to avoid doing this. So always try to find a ledge to get underneath or find, you know, some sort of cover to play around and make make it awkward and make it uncomfortable for the enemy team to, to hold certain positions. In certain spots, you did that really well. But once you had an advantage, instead of moving forward, you were always attracted to getting back onto the tower, which is uh, a, a big blunder. I think your jumps are good. I think your general like Splatoon kind of comfort and your comfort with Blaster, I think, are both fine. Um, playing under ledges is something that might take some time. Always be very loose with your movements and be ready to reposition at any point and know the right spots that you need to reposition to in order to have those advantages so outside of that i think you played really well and you didn't get a ton of value honestly out of your inkjet you'll get more value out of the inkjet when you're taking space when you're moving forward but yeah i i do think that you'll you'll climb super super fast once you once you tighten that up